What's going on guys? Tony Scongeli here with a quick review of the tower system and how you can best progress through it. Now, I'm not really going to go too much into detail, but I'm basically going to keep it in uh, two structure videos with the final video just being tower five. So tower one and tower two um, are relatively easy if you started this game correctly. So tower one, uh, honestly at this point, tower one is any characters you have so you might even be able to clear it completely on day one or two of the game and if you can't then try on day three and if you can't then try on day four and if maybe five or six days have passed and you're not figuring out tower of endurance uh, basically reroll your account and try again because you went wrong somewhere somewhere uh, you should have been able to do it now tower of endurance one has absolutely no requirements you can just go straight in without any issues and fight the fight up so just go in every day progress a little don't worry about it it's so easy even a caveman can do it but tower of endurance 2 becomes the first challenge you have because you require downtown characters uh, just take a quick look there are there are only 10 nodes in this tower and as long as you have downtown characters you should have absolutely no problem completing it but that said if you took the time to work on some of the better characters in the early game, if you've been watching my video series or if you've just recently discovered me, welcome. You want to be working on the downtown villain characters uh, as far as who the bad guys are and then in general kingdom characters uh, for your good guy players. Now obviously the exception to some of the kingdom characters is that the best one, Shan Yu, is a villain, but don't worry, he works on every team. So, and when you look at the kingdom characters you want to use for heroes, you don't have to really apply them to this tower. That said, it, it's not going to matter at this stage in your tower progression, but since the downtown villains will and will help you accrue more tower credits, as well as progress through any PvE content like the villains campaign, the club dungeon, and pretty decent progress in both sorcerer's tournament and arena if you can as long as you worked on the downtown villains team early you should have no problem with this tower now obviously i can't show you any of the fights um and i don't know if i could if it would be too helpful to you anyway because i'm so further advanced from this tower than most people who will be accomplishing it the first time that it really doesn't make too much of a difference whether or not i show you this is what happens but one thing i will tell you for all of the towers that you should probably hear first and i'll repeat it in every one of these videos is that the speed meter and turn meter of your opponents always differ it's not set every time and if you think you're just going to auto fight through every fight you're gonna have a bad time of it because you don't really have much control over what to expect going into the fight you have to see it a couple of times so if you are trying to progress in the tower one thing i will recommend to anybody and this i can show you is if you do go into a fight under any circumstances and you don't like what happened or something very 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 unfortunate happened uh they immediately took a turn and took out your strongest character or uh, someone stunned your team something along those lines if that happens then what you should do as quickly as you can is forfeit immediately whatever happened just forfeit the fight because when you forfeit the fight you don't lose anything on the characters you don't lose the team you just did you just backed out uh, and if anyone got uh, murdered in the fight they come back you don't you didn't lose them so forfeit the fight quit the app whatever it takes just give yourself enough opportunity to get around the rng of every tower now i do want to go into a little bit of detail so real quick let me show you the downtown characters and give you an idea of whom outside of the downtown villains you could use early to progress a little bit that might give you a little bit more value as you uh, proceed through the game. So, let's take a quick look at that. Okay, here we are, all of the downtown characters in the game. Now, you're going to see I have some that are seasonal. Uh, for example, the 
Incredibles team are all downtown heroes characters not very likely that you're gonna have them right now same thing with some of the toy story characters with the exception of buzz probably not gonna have too much access and of course zerg don't get me started on zerg that said big bad wolf jangles dr facilier syndrome demona these are all really important parts of the downtown villains team so any of them that you have should be easy to progress uh, obviously facilier is a very hard farm in the early game you have to either spend money or skip farming a character like Sean Yu in the exchange in order to get him. But if you do happen to have him by luck or whatever reason, he will obviously be a very important part of this team and very good for Tower 2. Uh, Buzz is a great fifth option, especially because as far as the downtown heroes characters go, he is all in all pretty solid, pretty decent kit works well with Syndrome and they both have a turn one stun available to kind of take advantage of uh, the fights in tower that you really need to take care of specific characters after you've gotten a couple reps in and understand what they do. Uh, the Onward team, Frozone, very unlikely that you've unlocked them and even if you did uh, they'll probably help a little bit but I don't know how much you want to invest in those characters unless you spent quite a bit of money getting them really strong so they're okay they'll probably help you a little bit in sorcerer's tournament early but not so much that you would panic but they're great options other than that i know it's tempting to kind of start with characters like sully or darkwing duck because well you get them relatively for free but they don't really impact what you're trying to do as you're progressing as you're a newer player and if we're in tower one and two you really don't want to waste your incredibly limited resources on characters that are situationally useful at stages in the game when you can start working on key components to teams like downtown villains or kingdom characters and push through. This is also to be true for characters like Anger and Judy Hopps. You may hear some people saying, oh, you have no idea how good Judy Hopps and Anger are. And the answer is you shouldn't because they're not that good. They are very good as utility characters in Endgame to counter very specific team comps, but you should never really work early on making sure that you have an Endgame counter to a team you don't even have yet. You should always make sure that you progress and build up the characters that will help you become stronger and then deviate or hedge a little bit as you proceed to work on characters like Judy and Anger. Anyone starting the game and working really hard on getting Judy, Hops, and Anger, uh, maybe even Korra, you're probably not going to have a great run through everything. But that said, if by some chance you do happen to have them, Judy Hops specifically would be a useful character for the tower, especially because Tower 2 is a very early tower, a very new player friendly tower, and the downtown characters you do have are fine. If you notice, I brought characters, you can kind of see when I stopped working on them based on what my level was. Sully was finished around level 36. Uh, he wasn't, I just brought him up there for the sake of it to test him out. Darkwing Duck, I couldn't even begin to use him. The characters that I worked on were just so much better than what he offered. And Judy and Anger, the second I unlock them, I, I put as little into them as possible. They, they're they not even helpful to me at the stage of the game I'm in, which is pretty close to endgame as far as it can be. So I'm not really worried about that. That said, you do have quite a bit of options, but I will always recommend anytime you see downtown uh, characters required, specifically downtown, but even downtown villains, the downtown villains team will be the correct team to work on throughout everything. So please, if you are listening, if you are trying to succeed, the Downtown Villains team will help you in yet another version of this game uh, as you're progressing and of course when you reach the end game. And real quick just to show off one more thing, if you are working on the Downtown Villains characters, uh, specifically the, the ones you've seen in some of my other videos, you will get to use them again not only in Tower 4 which is relatively important uh, but in tower 5 as multiple different nodes on tower 5 do have requirements for not only downtown characters in general one two three maybe even four if i remember yep four 
At least four nodes do require downtown characters and they only require you to have one mythical. So as we progress, and in the next video when we discuss uh, Tower 3 and Tower 4, uh, Tower 3 tends to be a tower that a lot of people get caught up in and they, they have this belief that I need to have a really strong oceanic team in order to complete Tower 3 and I can confirm for you that that's so not true because if I show you real quick, spoiler for the next video, my oceanic characters, you're probably going to figure out, but wait, how did you do that? And this is just recent, so the answer of how I was able to do the oceanic character is one good character and two pretty bad ones but we'll talk more about that in the next video so hopefully this video was helpful for you hopefully this keeps you on the right path of growth and you understand that working on good characters early will help you progress to the end game where you want to be so that you can start working on other characters and start getting some really good testing in as of right now the game doesn't have enough variety for you to believe that hedging and working on a character like Baloo or Monterey Jack is going to shot put you because their kit looks really good because right now if it doesn't have Sean Yu in it it's probably not winning many fights. Uh, that said I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you are interested in seeing the next one. If uh, I missed anything or if there's any other information you'd like to know comment below let me know and I'll cover it in the next version of this video uh, and I'll make sure I implement it in further ones but you guys asked for some more information about Tower so here it is. Have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli and I'll catch you later.